All right, this video I'm going to show you how to create a tessellation of a rectangle without using a computer. Right here I have a list of supplies. Uh, you're definitely going to need a pen, a pencil, some paper. If you have it, tracing paper, that'd be great. Definitely need scissors, some cardstock. A ruler is probably necessary. A protractor might not be. And you're going to have to have a little precision and some patience. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, to actually create the rectangle, you can either print it off, off uh, like a picture from the internet or I'll actually show you how to create one using a regular line piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the centimeter side of a ruler right? and I'm going to, along this blue line, I'm going to start at the intersection of the red line and the blue line and I'm going to simply draw a rectangle. This is where I'm going to start. I'm going to make it 10 centimeters. Alright? And I know that rectangles have 90 degrees, so I'm going to use the paper to my advantage, and I'm going to go along the red now and make this one maybe 7 centimeters along the red. And if you don't create this properly, it's not going to tessellate well. So that was 7, this is 7, this is 10, so this one needs to be 10 as well. All right, and I'm going to, again, use the ruler to my advantage. The ruler itself, the piece of plastic, is at a right angle, so I'm going to set it up so it lines up. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't have a protractor with me, and you don't actually need it if you're creative. All right, so that's 10 inches, or centimeters, rather, and then this way should be seven and one of the really cool ways to check to see if this is actually a rectangle would be to measure the diagonals and the def one of the definitions of a rectangle is that the diagonals have to be exactly the same so the diagonal here is about 12.1 centimeters and the diagonal here is almost exactly the same so that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Again, I would probably recommend that you just print one off of the internet, right? So it's a little bit more perfect. But you can go and certainly move forward with this one. What I'm going to do is use this one. Right, it's about the same size. And remember, your stencil to start can't have an area greater than 20 square inches. So. Right, this one, if I measure the area of it, that's about four and a quarter times a little over three. So the area of this one is is only about uh, twelve point five square inches. So that's okay. This is totally fine. <clears throat> All right. So from here, what I want to do is I want to change this side. All right. Just like we did in the other videos with the computerized versions of this. I'm going to change this side. So I'm going to start on the edge or on, at the vertex and I'm going to change this side. And I'm going to be pretty creative with it. Right? My recommendation is not to go too zigzaggy. Don't go, don't go too crazy with it, especially towards the ends because then you'll you'll you might run into some issues with overlapping and stuff like that. All right, from there we want to get our tracing paper out. So you get your tracing paper I'm just using a, a piece of regular paper here. And I want to trace over that line exactly. And again, this is where the precision comes in. It's really, really important to be precise at this stage. If you're not precise at this stage, your figure is not going to tessellate properly. All right, so I think I've got that pretty good, right? I just made a, literally just made a trace copy of it. All right, now I'm going to translate it over here. All right, and that's really some of the geometry behind this. This is a translation to slide from one edge or one side to the other. The opposite sides have to be identical to one another. I'm going to get my pen and I'm going to trace back over that line. But this time I'm going to push down really hard because I want to leave an indentation underneath. Pushing down really hard. 
leaving an indentation underneath. Again, precision is critical. All right, and then I'll move it, and hopefully the camera can pick up that there is a slight indentation where the pen was pushing down really hard. And I'm just going to trace back over that. You'll kind of be able to feel the groove that the pen left. So what we just did there was made an exact copy of the other side, the opposite side. All right, we need to do the same with the long side. So I'll go over here and change this side, you know, using some creativity. You don't have to make it curvy like that. You can make it if you want to, you know, very geometric and angular. You know, be creative with it. All right, you go to get your piece of tracing paper. And I'm actually going to tape this. I'm actually going to tape the bottom down. I'm going to take the original piece of paper down to the desk. That way it won't slide around. And then I'm just going to trace back over it. So I'm being really careful to trace perfectly. Any mistakes you make at this point are really going to cause problems in your big poster. And again, don't make this too crazy with too many jagged edges because you're going to have to cut this out and trace it over and over and over again. Alright, so I made a copy of that. In the computer, that was literally just a copy paste, but here we had to do it. We literally had to trace it and we're going to translate it over to the other side. Get our pen, line up those edges, the vertices should line up, and again we're going to push down and try to push down pretty hard here to get an indentation underneath. It's not to be too hard, but hard enough to kind of create an image underneath. Take your time with this. If you mess it up, just start over, right? It's all about patience and you know, right there I kind of I kind of went off the line, but that's okay. I fixed it and I got back on. Let's see how that looks. All right. Again, you can probably barely see it on the camera, but it did leave a nice mark. But I'm just going to trace back over with my pencil. And you're seeing that I'm literally making a copy of the opposite side. I haven't flipped anything over or rotated anything. It's just a, what we call a translation. That's all it is. It's a, it's a translation. It's a slide. That's all it is. All right. <clears throat> so what we're left with here is a figure that will, that will tessellate. All right. So I'm going to <clears throat> peel it off the desk and get my scissors. Now it's time to cut this thing out. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of cut around it so I don't have so much paper to deal with. All right, and you're gonna cut around, you're gonna ignore the actual rectangle and you're gonna cut around, you're gonna cut around the, the new curvy, the curvy uh, shape. So you cut this way, and again, being very precise, you cut down, and now we're going to go down inside the figure. It's always probably a good idea to cut into the corners instead of away from the corner, so you don't bend the paper too much. Alright, so we're getting this shape all cut out. And again, this takes a little bit of precision, some patience, and if you mess this up then the whole thing is not going to really work very well. 
So as you're cutting this out, you know, hopefully you're starting to think about like what kind of shape, you know, what kind of, uh, what does this look like? Does it look like anything like an animal or a person or a monster or something crazy? Like you want to be very creative with this stuff. And, uh, you know, if something doesn't come to you, you don't need to make it into a an animal or anything, but you know, you do need to have, like, your final poster needs to be needs to be in color, it needs to be really, like, needs to really pop out and kind of, like, be really, really creative and, and colorful. Halfway done here. And what we're going to do when you're finished with this, this is just a piece of paper, right? You don't want to have to trace this over an entire poster. Your poster if you remember from class, has to be at least 18 inches by 24 inches big. That's a pretty big poster. You're not going to want to trace a flimsy little piece of paper over and over and over again. So what we're going to do is transfer this to a sturdier piece of cardstock. One more edge here, and we're finished. As you can see, if you made your lines really, really jagged and crazy, this is this process right here is going to be a nightmare because it's just way more work than you actually need it to be. All right, so I've got my stencil. It still has the same area, all right, and that's actually what's going to. I'm going to transfer that over to cardstock. which is right here. So all I'm going to do is, and, and I'm not going to do this whole thing right now because I'm kind of running out of time, but what I'll do is I'll trace this shape onto a piece of cardstock. Right, and be really, really careful. And that whole shape is going to trace onto this piece of cardstock. It's a little bit heavier duty, right? That's going to be my stencil. You need to include that with your poster. And you can probably get rid of this, right? Once you have your stencil, then you are ready to trace that onto your big poster. And to get a better idea of, of that process, uh, you should go on to one of my other videos. But uh, that's basically the whole the whole step by step process of of creating a tessellation out of a rectangle without the use of a computer.